As we begin uh, the event, I'd like to acknowledge the fact that the university is on Treaty 6 territory, which is the traditional land of several First Nations and Métis people. My name is Pat Parody. I'm the Executive Director of the Centre for Constitutional Studies, which many of you know does research and public education on the Constitution. And uh, with respect to our public education mandate, we're very pleased to welcome uh, to today's event, uh, Quebec Minister responsible for Canadian relations <coughs> and the Canadian Francophonie, uh, uh, Honorable Jean-Marc Fournier. Now, I just wanted to mention that the Centre is actually, because of its mandate, very interested in the concept of federalism. And in fact, three uh, Quebec professors approached us uh, not that long ago to ask if they could publish articles in uh, one of our publications, the Constitutional Forum, about cooperative federalism because they wanted the Supreme Court of Canada to understand their arguments before it heard the uh, long gun registry case because of course the federal government was saying the Quebec government couldn't keep its data that it had collected in the long gun registry and so we hoped, they hoped, that the Supreme Court would read their articles and understand the importance of not a strict division of powers approach but rather a cooperative federalist approach and of course they did not unfortunately. Uh, but in any event, just to let you know, we were right in there with you on the federalism uh, uh, idea. So uh, I will uh, just a few housekeeping matters. If you would please remember to shut off your phones. You'll notice that our session is being video recorded. If you do not want to be video recorded, please sit at the back of the room. And uh, also, we do have evaluation sheets. We appreciate your feedback if you want to give it to us. And lastly, if you want to be on our list of people who are notified when we have events, please do sign up uh, on our website or there is a sign up sheet just outside the door. And so without further ado, uh, now Minister Fournier is under a very tight schedule today. He has to actually depart here at quarter to one. And so he's promised that he will make his report remarks short, uh, 15 minutes so that he can hear from you which is uh, wonderful, thank you very much, because he has a 30 minute presentation to give, so I, we appreciate that. And uh, I'll just say briefly, by way of introduction, that uh, he is uh, Jean-Marc Fournier, a Quebec politician and lawyer. He obtained his law degree in 1981 at Université de Montréal, and his uh, a master's degree in 1991 at the same university. He has served in many different capacities within the government in Quebec, uh, was appointed Minister of Justice and Minister Responsible for the Reform of Democratic Institutions in 2010. And since April uh, 2014, when he was re-elected, uh, he has served as government house leader and is now the minister responsible for Relations Canadiennes et de la Francophonie Canadienne. And so, it, today is a unique opportunity to hear from a Quebec uh, member of uh, the legislature and uh, to, uh, to ha engage in a dialogue which we're very appreciative to you for coming uh, to do. So, without further ado, Jean-Marc Fournier. Thank you very much. Uh, my presentation of 30 minutes will be uh, very brief. Uh, I will just try to present uh, what we are doing and uh, hopefully if some of you have read our policy, which is now in the form of a book, there is no cost, it's free, so uh, you could uh, look at it and, and read it and you will certainly understand more what we are uh, proposing. Uh, if I'm uh, in front of you, maybe you would ask why a Quebec minister is here in Alberta talking about Canadian relation. And, and probably if you know uh, more about history, you would ask why coming from Quebec, wishing to talk to other Canadian? And that would be a good question. Uh, in our policy, one change is the change of our department. Uh, before, it was the Secretariat aux Affaires Intergouvernementales Canadiennes, intergovernmental relation change for Canadian relation. There's a reason why we change the name. We decided that uh, if we want to be, to present our view, our vision, to present our position, and to make them understand, the best thing is probably to talk more to more people. And so not just limit our relation from government to government, but let's say in the political sphere, to talk also to member of the opposition in Ottawa, even for senators. Something that we was never done since the last 50 years and, and probably not before. 
uh, and, and not just limit our uh, proposition or presentation to the, pop the political sphere, but more than that, and that's the part very important, to present our vision to the civil society, mainly to groups like the one we are now, uh, but to media, to social media, to, to, to present everywhere we can what we think is important in our view, and if we think about the future of the country, share the, that vision. Allow us to have a vision, giving us ourselves the possibility to think not just about Quebec in Quebec, but Quebec in Canada, and what Canada should be in the future in our vision as Quebecers. So the title of that, that policy is, uh, I'm Quebecers, and it's my way of being Canadian a little bit different than the perception you could have of the last 50 years, uh, knowing or feeling or seeing the uh, separatist movement raising in the, the 60s and 70s and being very present in the 80s and 90s. Um, so there's this movement of being more present in the political sphere, more present as a government in the civil society. Uh, and the third pillar is to help citizens to be closer together without the message or the vision of the government. How we can bring more ties between the civil society of Quebec and, and the rest of the country. Um, economic ties, social ties, environmental. Uh, and, and, and so because of that, there's a change in the way Quebec government want to participate in the country that is very different than what we had before. Just to give you an example, uh, and we talk a little bit about that in the, in the paper, uh, and there's a, a, a clin d'oeil to the Francophonie Canadienne also with it. Um, when the, we decided as Quebecers to uh, support French immigration in the rest of the country, the immigration department in Quebec were not really in favor. And my own department was not very in favor. Because for the last 50 years, the policy is French in Quebec, English in the rest of the country. Well, we are 94.5 persons speak, able to speak French in Quebec. And we think that French in the country is an advantage for all Canadians, even those who don't speak French. And one of the uh, things that is very important is to help the uh, development of the Francophonie in every provinces. And if there's one structural solution for that or element to put for in, in front is certainly French immigration. Uh, and, and so that's a change in the way Quebec presents itself in the rest, uh, in, in the country, that is very different than it was before. Uh, why are we doing that? Uh, it's the 150th anniversary this year. And we thought coming to that anniversary, what will be, and we were the, the last time our mandate started in 2014, so we knew that 2017 was coming. And we ask ourselves, what will be the stand of Quebec for that anniversary, knowing that we were not part of patriation of the Constitution? What, what are we, are, are we going to celebrate something? Because there are things that we don't agree to, but on the other end, there are many things that make us proud. Economic progress, social progress that Canada and Quebec have known together over the, those years is very important. So how do you balance that? What's, what's really the situation? So, in fact, we arrive at the, the 150th anniversary asking ourselves, what's our history? Where we came from? Where do we want to go? Is there a place to go somewhere together? And this is the policy that, that, that we table, uh, saying uh, that uh, when we go back to the beginning of our federation, there was no, uh, everybody agreed that it was a, a, a consent of, let's say, two founding people. At that time, uh, we didn't give a place to Aboriginal, it's changing. But there was a, a, uh, an acceptation of the, let's say, collective diversity in, in the country at that time. There was two languages, it was coming since 1774, 1791, there was act being taken, re respecting those collective differences. Um, even after uh, Durham report 
proposing the assimilation of French. Uh, La Fontaine and Baldwin from Quebec and Ontario decide together that no, we will have to respect collective diversity. In 1867, it was there. Around 1930s, uh, in the rest of the country, outside of Quebec, emerge a new way, a new interpretation of the sense of the Federation. One nation, individual under that nation. But never in Quebec. Always having in mind, and still today, the same interpretation that we had at that time. So what really we are saying, in a few words, to be brief and to have your, uh, your question and make an answer to that. We are looking at what happened in, at the patriation, and, and mainly it is the consecration of that new interpretation outside of Canada, outside of Quebec. And Quebec is looking to go back to the initial interpretation. So that was the try with Meech Lake Accord. It failed. It was a try with Charlottetown. It failed. Uh, we had a referendum and separation, the second one in 1995. Everybody failed. Nobody won. And because of that, everybody lose, and everybody get back at their home, and we shut up for 20 years. Now, is it the time to talk about it again? The last 50 years, Quebec has changed a lot. In the 60s, the, the French population were second-class workers. We didn't have a, a great organization. It was the Révolution Tranquille that have changed. Now we've got confidence. Our economy is going well, and French have taken our place. We've got to work on being a, an inclusive nation, making a better place for Aboriginal, better place for our English-speaking community to develop their sense of belonging to Quebec. Because if we ask Canada to openly recognize and include in Canada the collectivity of, of Quebec being sensing itself as a nation, well, we've got to do the same thing in our own territory. We've got to open and, and, and make people develop their sense of belonging to Quebec. If we're able to do that, Quebec will be stronger. And if Canada do the same thing for Aboriginal, for Quebecers, for those who, who feel that they maybe are not totally included, if we add to the individual diversity that is a value that everybody recognizes in Canada, if we add to that the dimension of collective diversity, there is no cost, but there's an advantage. The advantage is that people will feel that they are included. Today, and I will complete on that, 75% of Quebecers and all Quebecers uh, the big majority, uh, French-speaking, uh, feel an allegiance to Quebec. It's a strong attachment to Quebec. But 75% of Quebecers also feel, have a sense of belonging to Canada. So it's a, it's a number that you can say it's a good or a bad number. If you think that all Quebecers want to make separation of Quebec, it's a good number. But if you think that we want to live together and try to develop a way of being together. Well, there's 25 person that doesn't want to know nothing about Canada. That's a bad number. So we've got to work about that. We've got something to do. And the, and the proposition we are making is a proposition to bring everybody in, make a place for them. And so the recognition of our particular sense of belonging for us Quebecers, same thing for the Aboriginal. It's the only way to develop a common sense of belonging, a common sense of belonging to Canada. And, and, and it may be seen as philosophical and, and, and theoretical, but in fact, how do you do that? Well, the only way to do that is to know us, each other, better, to create more ties. We think we continue to present ourselves as two solitude in our relation Quebec to Canada. And we forget, and in some aspect, it is, it is true. But we forget that we've got many, many ties. Quebec sell more products and exchange more with New Brunswick than with France. Have more trade with BC than with China. With Ontario, we are the fourth region in North America, the fourth economic region in North America. California, Texas, New York, and it's Quebec and Ontario after that. So, there's people who talk to other, they, they sell things, you know, they have to make contacts. They got to do something. Um, when um, uh, Madame Nutley made a presentation two years ago of his new policy on environmental energy, 
on the stage with her was Stephen Gilbo, who is uh, a guy from Equiterre in Quebec. It's a Quebecer, environmentalist, who has a network with other Canadians involved in environment. And them, with their ties, they are able to uh, influence public policy. Th those are ties that exist. Those are people that talk together. They, by that, they are able to understand more each other. What we need, and that's the proposition we are, we are making, is we should develop more ties, more economic ties, more social ties, environmental ties, even political ties. We must go in that direction. And the only way to do that is to develop a dialogue. We don't have all the, all the tools, all, the, all the, 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 the way to do it. We, we hope that in the political field, they will be open to that. Madame Lotte, Madame Lotte we, uh, were uh, on the June 2nd. Madame Wynne, who came to Quebec, said yes, there are, there's an evolution on that. But what we need, really, and that's the reason why uh, we, I'm here in a university, and I was yesterday in Calgary, last uh, Monday, uh, Tuesday I was in Concordia, last week in McGill, in New York University, uh, one week ago, and we we'll continue like that. Our policy, it's a government policy, that's right, but really, who wrote that policy? Well, academics, since the last 20 years in many universities here in Canada and elsewhere in the world, talking about pluralism, talking about federalism, talking about how we, can we live together? Can we develop tools to live together? It's about that in our policy. So in fact, we are just so under influence of university. And we need them. Why? Because dialogue is about idea. We don't have all the ideas, but we like the ideas of being together, of being closer together, of having more ties and more understanding. We like that. And we think that going, starting our policy, our launching with coming to university is the only way that we can bring the first ties, saying, talk with your counterparts in other, uh, other university uh, and, and talk again about relation between Canadian, of course, Quebec, Canadian relation, uh, Aboriginal relations, invent, create ways for us to have that dialogue so that we are able to hear more what the other have to say and express more what we have to say. If we don't do that, well, perception will be the only way of talking what, and not talking to each other, but to, to live. We will live on our perception. I'll let you, and that's probably will be a question, I'll let you on that, but one example of that. And somebody have said, maybe it's not the right time for me to come here talking about a dialogue at a time where uh, there's a proposition of referendum against equalization payment because there's a question of pipeline and, and Bombardier and things like that. This is an illustration of the dialogue we need because if in one province some say something, on the other province, some say other things. Well, it's perception that we accept will continue to be in confrontation. We need a place where facts come to the table, confrontation ended, and the aspiration of living together, having reciprocal and harmonious relation should be the basis of our relation. That's the proposition we made in our policy. So if you are in the camp of having more ties, this is our policy. If you want less ties, well, that's the way we did before. So decide your camp. Merci beaucoup. Thank you. Ready to receive your question. So you'll notice there is a microphone there. We would appreciate it if you stepped up to the microphone if you're going to ask a question simply because we want to get the questions uh, recorded. So does anyone want to s take the first brave step and ask the first question? I'm very happy, you know, because I will start my speech if you don't have any questions. <laughs> um, Minister, thank you for your, uh, for your comments. Can you give us some specific examples of uh, areas where Quebec and Alberta share similar interests in, in what is often associated with, uh, unfortunately, uniquely with Quebec, but Alberta has a strong interest in 
provincial autonomy as well. Yeah. And could you just talk about the parallels between Alberta's and Quebec's interests in that area? Yeah. In, in the speech I was supposed to deliver, I would have talked about Frédéric Boilly, uh, who had ex expressed that we had in common the fact that we've got a, 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 a rebellion spirit uh, provincial rebellion spirit. I don't know if it's, it's in the right expression in English, but un esprit de rébellion. Uh, in fact, because we uh, in this are in the same position where we say we have our jurisdiction in Alberta and Quebec, and we want to take our decision in respect of those jurisdiction for the benefit of our society, who can be different from the, the, the neighbors. Not not saying that it's bad to be different. Diversity is good but we've got to use our tools. And, and in fact, uh, there are many examples of that. One is the Security Commission that we, uh, we sued the federal government together. We won. They're still trying to do something, but, but, but we've got to, to, to still work together. So there's there's issue like that. Uh, we, we've got a, a, w a way of looking at federalism in, in that is, I think, would, would be uh, in similarity. Not that we can f not, er, not find that in other jurisdictions, but we've got to accept that not all provinces are equipped with the same kind of tools. Uh, the bureaucracy in, on, in, in, in Ontario, Quebec, Alberta is not the same as it is in Prince Edward Island or, or Newfoundland. And, and so that, that creates a, a uh, difference that we think must be taken into account by the federal government. That's why we talk a lot about asymmetry. Madame Wynne, who came to the uh, National Assembly some, some weeks ago, it was the first in 150 years, that means something, uh, recognized the, as the, the importance of asymmetry as a way of having common, common goal that we sue together, but our own way. But we've got common goal. This is what we've got to have, common goal. If we have to follow different route to go there, that's okay if we've got a common goal. So it's a little bit about that, and the policy is a little bit about that. What is our vision of the future? Do we want to have common goal? What kind? How are we going to go there? The, bi the, the country is big, very different. We should use those kind of tools. And, and I think that Alberta and, and Quebec uh, are probably on the, same, on the same side on that. If you allow me, I will add something else about what we've got in common. Uh, that's probably what we've got in common as government. But as you see, my proposition is to take the government out of the discussion. We would like citizens civil society, academics, to talk about the subject I'm talking right here, right now. And I'll give you an example. I was in the hotel this morning. The guy's name is David Barriou. He's working for a company in Quebec called ADEX. Uh, they, making, they are making products for the houses and building and things like that. He sells more in the West than in Quebec, in the manufacturers in Quebec. And he come here uh, one week uh, every month. This is an economic tie. He's talking to, to people. And he said to me, you know, I don't want, don't want Albertans, they like us. They, they like us. And we like them. And it's, it's a, somebody who knows somebody. And there's personal relation. This is about ties I'm talking about. Going over politics. And, and, and look at the situation today. If I had a journalist in Quebec asking me in an interview a few minutes ago, uh, are you talking to Jason Kinney? Are you going to answer to him? Because media want us to be in a confrontation mood. Well, the answer is that, you know, we may talk about that, but we've got for, for, for 15 millions of exchange between Alberta. Do we want to go to 20 and 25 or go to 5 or 8? I'm, I want to go to 20, 25. And that means having more in common, having more ties. And, and so it's not just, we're not too solitude, in fact. We've got many solidarities, but we forget about it. We don't talk about it. We should. So, j'ai une question. Uh, with respect to Quebec's perspective on the Constitution, I'm just curious. You're talking about environmental ties, mm -hmm. business ties, and you've given us examples, and that's all wonderful on the ground. But how important is it for Quebecers uh, for them to know that they actually signed on to the Constitution? Is that important, or is it just past tense? Uh, it, your question is, uh, I like your question a lot, because normally when we talk about constitution, people say, what's on the ground? What's really, ap what's really happening? What's, what's the concrete? Because constitution, you know, my neighbor don't talk about that, uh, never. I'm sure your neighbor do. Uh, <laughs> even with you. Uh, but, but the thing is that constitution is about a legal uh, wording 
that must mean something. There's tools in a constitution that are there to support something, an aspiration. That aspiration is how are we going to live together? That, that was a constitution answer, in fact. How are we going to make people live together? What are going to be their tools? What are going to be their institution to live together? We, we had the experience of trying to change the constitution um, with, I would say, head of state, head of government talking together. You, you go back to patriation, uh, before that, all the round Victoria in the 70s and everything like that. Uh, and after that, you remember, for those who have my age, you remember Meech, the first Meech, the second Meech in June, uh, of 2003 weeks between them, and the end of Meech. Um, the end of Meech, it was marvelous, you know, for th those who like politics. Uh, you, you, you listen to the media and you heard that your premier is going to go to a meeting in Ottawa for the day. And three days after, he's still there. And everybody was asking, do they have some new shirt? They've got to buy it because they were like, no, it, really, I'm saying that it's a joke, but it's not a joke. It was like that. It was a crisis. And people, in, even in Quebec and in the rest of the country, w what are they talking about? And Quebecers were asking to a recognition, like I said, of the interpretation, the sense of the federation that we had before. We lost it. It seems at patriation, we're trying it at Meech. We saw that we were losing it. There are many uh, aspects, many, th many things happened to explain that. We could come back to that, but but they felt that. And and after that, we had the referendum where everybody lose. And today, where are we? Well, we cannot just say it disappeared. It didn't. It's still there. How? What are we going to do to do? Nothing. Not sure it's helpful. Something what? Well, the something what is, if we go back to the beginning, why are we together? Do we wish to be together? Who are you? Who am I? Do we've got something in common? Well, if you look at history, the answer is we've got a lot in common. We just don't talk about it. And we would like to be together, but as what we are. I often say I'm living just near the Mohawk Reserve of Ganawage, and, and their sense of belonging is to the Mohawk Nation, not to Quebec, not much to Canada. Is it the right way? Do we, do we, do we think that's, that that's it? That's the way to do? Well, I think more that we, we should develop a sense of belonging together. We are neighbor. I can walk to the reserve. So it's very close. So why not? We don't have any something in common. We should develop that. And that's the same thing for, for Quebec. And, and if we do that, if we've got that as a project, I heard you saying I'm living in Edmonton. I don't know Aboriginal. I don't know. And Quebec, well, it's far. And why do I bother? Well, even for every Canadian to participate at imagination of a, of a model, of a federalism, where there's a place for everyone. Why diversity is not just something of an individual, but as that individual feel that he is also a member of a group. And that by recognizing that all is belonging in his identity will make him uh, accepting and developing a sense of belonging with a bigger group, a Canadian, well, that plurinationalism is probably one of solution that could help people live together in their own country. Mr. Trudeau went to the United Nations and he said, the world needs more Canada. And I think that in part is right, because Canada has a model of diversity. But I think that the, 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 the Canada that the world that the, the, the Canada that the world needs more is a Canada that give all dimension of diversity. And if we do that, even if you think at Spain and Catalonia, probably there's some ways of looking at it in, in that way. So to use the CNN approach, uh, can I say that the answer that you've given me to my question is that uh, Quebec would like to think it has signed the Constitution then? Uh, of course, if we develop our ties, we understand 
as Quebecers and no other Canadian want to go through a constitutional crisis. They want to go through a constatation of we want to be together. And yes, of course, at the end, one of the aspects of this policy is to have a constitution where Quebecers say, I'm in. And, and the, 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 the policy that we've, we are proposing is a policy to be in. We're knocking at a door. Is that door will open to diversity, to collective diversity. And if it open, you will enter Aboriginal, Quebecers, and other groups. It's the cost is just having more citizens feeling that they are member of the same place together, developing that. That's, that's the advantage. And clearly, I don't see the cost. But maybe we could have some question bringing us to the cost. Just a point of clarification. Um, the paper is a government paper, and it's built on academic thought. And I'm just wondering, is it perceived to reflect the current um, feelings of the Quebec people, or are you also doing road trips within Quebec? Yeah. Uh, yes, I said I was in, uh, in Concordia uh, this week, McGill last week. Uh, we had meeting with uh, people of UCAM and, and, and we'll continue to do that. Uh, your question is probably, uh, it's a governmental paper, how does it share by all Quebecers? Uh, well, a, a way to answer that, because uh, we didn't make a survey on that, and I'm pretty sure that there's not so many Quebecers who've read it, to be clear. Um, even those who are interested in that, there's not a majority who've read it. That's why we make a tour. <laughs> but but uh, we think that uh, we need people to not just read the book, but just get involved in, in our relation between ourselves. And if 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 that question is of importance for some, well, uh, that discussion, that dialogue must be created and we should find ways for that. Um, one of ways to answer your question was um, the day we table it. Uh, it's the, the, the policy for those who have read it. It's a big part of history. History is something sometimes there's people who that we say in French, uh, the controverse. It's not oh, everybody say, oh, that's, that's, that's not the right history. The, you didn't talk about that, didn't talk about that. Well, the history that we, we have put in, in the book didn't, was not contested. In fact, probably because there's an, an equilibrium uh, of, of different aspect. Um, and, and it was received by the sovereignist movement, mainly Mr. Lise, who made the comment for, for them, as being an ambitious proposition. Of course, in their mind, an ambition that will never be uh, a success, and so a reason more for Quebec to, to get out. But as I said, uh, there are 75% of people that have the feeling of being Canadian. It's 71 for the elderly and 79 for the youngster. In fact, what are we seeing in Quebec, as we see in Canada, as we see in the world? Is the youngster want to talk to the world? There's no many problem to have different sense of belonging, to have a plurality of uh, sensibility that it's, it's part of them. Uh, if you look at what Macron is saying in France and, and what's happening in Europe and, and even the, the opposition of the Brexit and, and everything that is said, and even Brexit, the youngster didn't have the same vote. There's, there's opposition between those two tendencies right now. Are we gonna go with living together or living apart? Are we going to isolate ourselves? Are we, what, what, what's going to win? It seems for those who, who have a certain lecture of it that, well, it's too, too bad and too late. Um, everything's going to fall apart, fall apart. And Europe is, is going down the drain. Uh, we'll look at what's happening in the United States. Uh, migration, the uh, uncertainty, the, the, the inequality. Uh, there's, there's a lack of confidence of the population, of the difference, I would say, for the difference. But on the other end, do we have a choice? If we really believe that on a human vision that we should be together more than being apart, well, it's up for them who believe that to start to talk, because we don't talk a lot about that. We let the other camp talk. So maybe it's time for having some people talking about 
let's say, for, the, for, for certain people, it's going to be the naive proposition, or the positive proposition, or the optimistic proposition. You can name the way you want, but it's the, the only choice in what camp you are. And, 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 and the camp of, I think, people that are young, uh, that were not there at Meech, were not there at Patriation, want to open their window to the world. Um, I think that's certainly a direction that, it's, that can, 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 can have a good result. But for that, uh, we need not just to, uh, not, not, not to have a minister of the Quebec government to talk about it. Okay to start the talk, but I will leave the place. And, and I'm not here for you to say, good luck, Mr. Fournier, good work, good luck. If you say that to me, well, I missed everything. What I want, and that's the reason why we are meeting before and we're meeting at elsewhere, is to talk to people like you who are in the field of ideas, thinking about ideas, new ideas. Well, I'm just saying get involved, create ideas. We need ideas. We need people who are going to spend time and energy to find ways to bring people closer together. That is what we're talking about. Of course, it's a Quebec issue that I'm talking about. But if you talk to a leader of the First Nation, he'll talk about the same thing, and it will be his issue. The issue that I'm talking is the fact that we are in a society where difference existed. It's a good thing, and we should find tools to make those differences live together, work together. And, and we don't have all the tools. And we need you to develop those tools. We need you to create this dialogue, to talk about it. And hopefully, if those who have ideas talk about that, well, other in the society will follow. And certainly, politicians will follow. This is what politicians do. And, and they, they have to do their job. I'm not diminishing what we are doing as politicians. But we need people who have ideas. And after that, it's possible to execute them. But really, with cynicism that we've got in the society, we need people that are not politicians to talk about that. So thank you if at the end you don't say good luck, but you say, yes, I'm getting involved. Well, I'm going to speak from here. I, this is an unusually quiet crowd, uh, Minister Fournier. Usually we have quite a few uh, questions. And I'm just wondering if I can speak for the group. I, I, the people I spoke to before the event said, you know, Quebec doesn't need to think there is a problem. We don't, we don't really think it's a, it's a big deal. They're, they're, they're part of the country, and the fact that they haven't signed the Constitution makes absolutely no difference. It's, it's, uh, but, but I think what we're hearing from you is that for Quebecers, it actually does make a difference. You're yeah. giving us your perspective. And, and so, uh, you know, maybe more federal, provincial conferences on the uh, national front might be helpful, but also you're, you're encouraging us on the ground level to, to be more communicative and to create a narrative that involves all of us. And that might also be a, a trifecta, including uh, indigenous uh, uh, people. So thank you very much for making your way out to uh, Alberta. We very much appreciate the fact that you would engage us in this perspective of yours and in a dialogue about uh, Canadian federalism. Thank you Merci. very much. Thank you.